Politicians race to get their last word in before Judgment Day. You'll find out what they have to say. Northwest Airlines gets back in the air. We'll have details. And perturbed about parking in downtown Duluth, we have a report just for you. Good evening. I'm Dave Gench. And I'm Michelle Lee. Time is ticking away for candidates hoping to get some last-minute support before tomorrow's primary. Despite the gloomy weather, candidates made their way to northern Minnesota to round up more votes. Tonight, Jody Grayson shows us some last-minute sights and sounds from the campaign trail. On Tuesday, Minnesota voters will narrow a crowded field of DFL candidates for governor. The latest polls surveying 1,100 adults statewide shows that Skip Humphrey leads the pack with 37% of the respondents' support. Mark Dayton follows with 19%, Mike Freeman with 17%, Ted Mondale, 11%, and Doug Johnson, 8%. But it's still anyone's race. In the past, candidates have led by more than this, and have lost. With a race as close as this one, candidates need all the votes they can get. Today they spent their final hours traveling all around the state urging people to get out and vote. The one important thing we're doing is asking every person that we meet to please go and vote, to bring their friends to the polls. If they want to have an even better state of Minnesota than it is today, they need to vote for Humphrey Moe. Last days are always important. Lots of people make up their minds. Uh, lots of people are still wondering, asking questions, and it's important for us as a democracy to have a large turnout. With only hours remaining until the polls open, volunteers are working around the clock trying to drum up some last-minute support for their candidates. Calling some of the voters to, uh, or likely voters, to come out and vote in the primary tomorrow, DFL primary. After today, many of the campaign trails will come to an end since only one candidate can be chosen to represent the DFL party in November's election. Um, I, I in Duluth, Jody Grayson, the, uh, News 6. The polls are open tomorrow from 7 in the morning until 8 o'clock at night. Well, if you need information before casting your ballot tomorrow, the state has a toll-free line set up to help you. You can find out the location of your polling place and also get information on how to register to vote. The number to call is 1-877-600-VOTE. Now, if you'd need that number but didn't get a chance to write it down, don't worry. We'll run it again later on in this newscast. For the first time since ending the 15-day pilot strike, Northwest Airlines is back in the air. The first flight, bound for Seattle and Tokyo, took off this morning. The Northwest cargo plane was carrying 30,000 pounds of material and supplies needed to bring the airline to full operations. Northwest Airlines is expected to have a quarter of its flights back on schedule for Wednesday and to be in full service by next Monday. However, the company isn't out of the woods yet. The machinist union has reportedly rejected a tentative labor agreement. Now, on to the Duluth teachers' labor dispute. The union is under fire tonight from a local taxpayers' rights organization. The group called FIGHT claims the teachers' union is distorting facts in recent contract negotiations. This full-page ad in the newspaper says the teachers' union is wasting thousands of dollars in taxpayer money in recent lawsuits against the Duluth School District. Teachers' union leader Frank Warner says FIGHT is actually attacking the community and its ad against the union. Well, if you try to park in downtown Duluth, you know how hard it is sometimes to find a space. The Greater Downtown Council is once again tackling that age-old parking problem. Marine Tallarico reports with the Duluth Technology Village coming in, many fear the parking problem will go from bad to worse. It's a familiar sight in downtown Duluth. Cars waiting and waiting to find a space. Driving around the block, backing up, hoping and praying to get a spot. A lot of times I'm going around and around and around and around and around the block. Sometimes you can find one like I did just now, or other times you have to drive around. Frustrated drivers are a concern to downtown businesses. If people get too fed up with parking, the fear is they'll stop shopping downtown. That's why the Greater Downtown Council has set up a special task force to address the problem. We've decided to be a little more proactive about it. We're going to be working with the city and suggesting lots more signage, ways to free up a lot of the on-street parking meters. Uh, there's a problem with downtown employees plugging the meters all day long and taking those. That's not a good use of uh, the you know, the parking meters. And with the technology village going in on the east side of downtown, some fear matters will just get worse. The city is planning on building a huge ramp. 
Technology Village is going to be adding uh, surface parking this year and ultimately as many as 600 parking spaces in a ramp. Conlon says parking will always be an issue in Duluth, but with 9,000 spaces available in the downtown area, it will likely come down to remanaging existing spaces than adding new ones. Some drivers avoid the meters altogether and opt for ramps when they're available. Their suggestion? More ramps. And I think that would be a good idea. In downtown Duluth, Maureen Tallarico, News 6. The downtown parking task force plans to bring its suggestions to city leaders within the next couple of weeks. Still to come, the Touchstone Awards. You'll find out who's being honored for local community service. Plus, we'll have a new six follow-up on the sale of Lake Superior water. You'll find out about a plan to prevent anyone from taking Great Lakes water for profit. And speaking of water, George, no shortage of that out in the garden tonight, huh? Uh, absolutely not, Dave. But I'll tell you what, if you went and added up all the rain that we saw this weekend, you'd find that there were many trillions of gallons, all of which were welcome and most of which got soaked up by the thirsty earth. Complete details and a wrap-up of those rainfall amounts when we come back. Keeping you in touch with today's news with Michelle Lee, Dave Gench, meteorologist George Kessler, and Tom Hansen Sports. You're watching News 6 at 6. George's Garden is built and maintained by the London Road Garden Center. For more information, log on to our website at www.kbjr.com. Occasionally, time flies even faster than usual, like during the Dodge Summer Clearance, where for a limited time, Dodge Neon comes with $1,500 cash back, reducing your price to under $10,500 on this fun-to-drive car. Or instead of cash back, select exceptionally low one9 financing, which also means substantial savings. But whichever neon offer you choose, please hurry while time is still on your side. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Who, who's gonna be there for you? Who's gonna help you find it? Who's gonna be the one you turn to when you're in doubt? It's to you I turn to when I need to learn to where to go in my home. Imagine a wrap so sensuous, so elegant, so dramatic, you might forget it's a sandwich. Let your tongue tango across Subway's new wrap menu. The thrill of the new chicken Caesar grill. The passion of chicken parmesan. And the tantalizing taste of our chicken teriyaki. Each embraced in a tender wrap. Subway's new wraps. The way a sandwich should be. Up to $750 cash back on Chevy Halftime. Gotta get it. The cash back is big. 2000 factory cash back on Chevy S10 trucks. Gotta get it. I repeat, $2,000 cash back. On every 1998 Chevy S10 in stock. Gotta get it, gotta get it. It's Chevy clearance time. With big cash back. Or financing less than 1%. And that means big savings. Get it at your Chevrolet dealer. Gotta get it. Now. You just shipped them 20 bucks. I did? It's not that good. Oh my god, I did. Will you take it out for me? No, 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 you put it in. Please, please. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey! Hey! Run! From the producer and director of Cheers, Will and Grace, premiering next Monday on NBC. George Kessler's weather is certified by the American Meteorological Society. 
This is a look from our new Doppler radar about how much rain we've seen across the region. I'm going to get out of the way, but I'll explain a little bit about what you see here. That band of green to dark green in the middle is just the core of some showers and thunderstorms that lined up one behind the other and moved through the region. Go to the south where you have this really light blue, only about a tenth of an inch. Our weather watchers down there were shut out from the really big moisture. Same story up to the north, International Falls and Little Fork and places like that, which are really crying for the rain just didn't happen. But boy, I'll tell you, you get right down here in the center, those dark green, that's four inches plus from those repeated thunderstorms just moving through the region. Lenore Johnson over in Two Harbors, she was just ecstatic, received plenty of rain there. Just into the Twin Ports, lots and lots of rain. And there was some across the Big Lake over in Port Wing. Hallelujah, says Gwen Levesque. Current temperature is 72 degrees. The dew point is 65. The dew point is finding its way downward because the winds are out of the north. It's drier behind the front, but it's going to take its sweet old time. Temperatures come up because of the sunshine. Pressure is 29.81. Humidity is 79%. Numbers across the region, except where you have the thick cloud cover and the rainfall, temperatures there in the 60s, but everywhere else up into the muggy 70s. Feels like a summer evening out there because it's so close. Now to our south, 73 in the cities, a far cry from the 90s that they saw yesterday. We're sitting there around 59, 60 degrees. They are down there 90 to 95. Just be very, very grateful you live where you do, unless you really like that steam heat. Out to the west, 89 degrees, pure South Dakota. Uh, some of those rainfall totals, uh, the weather watchers, uh, Ruth O'Brien and Herbster, 2.7 inches of rainfall with that system. It was really welcome because it was so dry and because it took a whole day for it to come in. Didn't really have any reports of too much heavy flooding, a few wet basements here and there, but mostly it just hit the ground and soaked in. You can almost hear the earth saying, ah. Up to our north, 40s, 50s, 60s. I'm going to get out of the way of this map, too. Take a look at how vertically stacked the numbers are. And when I say that, I mean that you have just these belts of temperatures going south to north or north to south, depending on how you look at it. A little pool of cold air here, but that's mostly because of cloud cover. This is just genuine air mass. And when we see this, it's an indication that fall is in the works because it's gradually moving to the south. You don't have these little arrows or lobes pointing out here and there. Satellite picture in motion, heavy rainfall has been experienced in southern portions of Wisconsin. Right there we have those bright white clouds also around Green Bay. Believe it or not, those are the remains of Tropical Storm Francis, which lingered all weekend like a bad house guest across the south, took off across Missouri yesterday, and has now gotten swept into the jet stream flow. It'll be out of the picture very quickly now that it's been caught in those high-speed winds. But earlier, up to 11 inches of rain reported around Kansas City, Missouri, with this passing storm system. Here's radar in motion. The dark blues, that's the heaviest rain. We'll probably see totals three, four inches coming out of southern Wisconsin with this storm around Chicago. They've been seeing some rain, but not as much. It held off to the west for most of the afternoon. Northern lower Michigan, you'll be seeing plenty of rain there. The up close and personal radar, one or two sprinkles left across northwestern Wisconsin, maybe even a rumble of thunder off to the east of Clam Lake, but that's the end of it. That's the front going by. Behind it, high pressure will take over. Next couple of days will be absolutely gorgeous. Put those fronts into motion. It's a sweeping front. It's a slow sweeping front. It leans on its broom every now and again, but it will have enough energy to chase that Francis moisture off to the east. Once that high pressure picks up some steam, it'll take over. We'll be left in the pocket on Wednesday, but already looking out to the west, we begin to see the return not only of heat and humidity, but some storminess as well. Here's forecast for the overnight hours. It's almost inevitable that we will see some patchy, dense fog forming. There's just so much moisture in the air. So motorists take care. It could be uh, quite dense in those cooler locations. For tomorrow, overall, not a bad day. Temperatures topping out around 70, which is where we are today. But the humidity will be much more bearable. Winds out of the northwest shifting into the northeast, keeping it somewhat cooler near the lake by Wednesday. We'll just call it cool and breezy, 65, 70, maybe a few lower 70s over by Ashland. The five-day forecast, hmm, what can I say? Through Thursday, we look golden. Friday and Saturday, another rambunctious storm system pushes in from the west, perhaps our drought problems being left behind. It looks like a change. Mm -hmm. You're right, George. It's, uh, there are certain indications in the pattern that we're now starting to really enter fall. But no sign of snow, right? <laughs> oh, my um, You know, I looked. It's, I looked. You know me. I always like. look for snow. It's too far to the north. Northern right. Canada still. Keep up there. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, George. Yep. Now we have a News 6 follow-up on a story we brought to you earlier this year about the sale of Lake Superior water. Representative Dave Obey is now asking Congress to vote on a resolution for the U.S. and Canada to outlaw the sale of Great Lakes water.
to foreign countries, businesses, or individuals. Now, this comes after the Ontario Ministry of Environment granted a permit to a Canadian firm to take up to 158 million gallons from Lake Superior to export to Asia. Congressman Obi says he wants the State Department to, quote, protect Lake Superior and make sure it's not raided for private profit. Well, today, the Dual Superior Area Community Foundation got together to honor three nonprofit programs. The focus this year is programs promoting responsibility. The Lifehouse Teen Parent Center took home the 1998 Touchstone Gold Award. Their emphasis lies in opening doors for kids on the street. But other organizations, such as the Volunteer Attorney Program and Kids Voting, were also recognized. You know, what's really exciting is that there are three nonprofit organizations that we're recognizing today. Um, kids Voting is a really excellent example of a program that encourages people to become engaged by voting every year. And a great way to start is by teaching kids to vote. Well, board members say award ceremonies such as these aid in spreading awareness to other problems. Well, Tom Hansen joins us now with an update on sports. We're talking injuries in football. Looks serious. Huh? Yeah, both the Packers and Vikings won, but it came at a cost. We'll tell you more about Dorsey Levins and Brad Johnson when we come back. And the proctor Hermantown High School football rivalry has taken on a new twist. Well, that story more when we come back. Hang on to your senses for the new chocolate rock from Dairy Queen. Your ears buzz when you crack through that chocolate shell. Your nose tingles over hot fudge surrounding that DQ soft serve. Your tongue does the tango. It's cold, it's hot, it's crunchy with toasted almonds. Your eyes spin when they see more hot fudge and toasted almonds. And when you scoop up the last of this treat, you realize you want another. The chocolate rock treat. Hurry in and get one for just $1.99 only from Dairy Queen. It's what your senses crave. It's evening in Lincoln Junction, and the lights are going on. Because two generations ago, your friends and neighbors built an electric co-op. Since then, we've kept the power flowing steadily to you and your growing community. Now, local co-ops are joining other co-ops to form a nationwide alliance. Touchstone Energy. To ensure state-of-the-art technology at an affordable price. It's the power of human connections. We are the Touchstone Energy partners of Minnesota and Wisconsin. Just $109 after rebate. Brighten any room with a fresh coat of Dutch Boy paint. Dirt Fighter interior flat paint covers most surfaces in one coat. Just $9.98 a gallon. Save on paint and everything else for your home at Menard. Save big money at Menard. And now, sports with Tom Hansen. The Vikings may have won yesterday's game against St. Louis, but they lost their starting quarterback for up to possibly a month. Viking trainer Fred Zambrelletti said it's not a season-ending injury, but the Vikings haven't issued a specific timetable for Johnson's return. Johnson left the game yesterday shortly after being tackled by two Ram defenders in the fourth quarter. They originally thought it was a sprain. Turns out Johnson has a broken bone in his right leg. Before he left the game, Johnson was 18 of 31 with two touchdowns, 208 yards through the air. Randall Cunningham replaced Johnson when he got hurt a year ago and did so again yesterday. Cunningham found CC for the game-winning score from 19 yards out with just over two minutes to go in the game. And Ram quarterback Tony Banks rallied the troops, but the clock was the biggest opponent as the clock expired before they could call timeout, allowing Minnesota to post a 38-31 win. Banks coming up just a yard short on the keeper. Robert Smith ran for a career-high 179 yards and scored twice. The Vikings are now 2-0 on the year. Anytime uh, that you're 2-0, you're happy, but you're concerned. You're concerned if you have to score 38 points to win. Uh, you're concerned uh, about a lot of things. You know, obviously, it, it, it was a, a tight moment for us, but, you know, defense rose up when they needed to. 
Well, on a play like that, they know we got one play to run. They put ran basically everybody into the end zone, and I had a shot. Maybe if I get in the air, maybe I get in, but it's all hindsight. The Packers also won 23-15, but they too got some bad news. Running back Dorsey Levens got hurt but rushed for 43 yards before leaving the game. Levens broke his right leg and severely sprained his right ankle. A cast was put on today and he could miss up to six weeks. Afterwards, the Packers had Levens in their thoughts along with the play of the defense. We wanted to go out there and play well today. I think we did. And the biggest thing was controlling and stopping their running game. You know, the defense just played a heck of a game and it really helps, especially offensively, when, when your defense can, can shut down that offense and get you the ball back in the spots on the field where we got them. Our offense re relies on us getting the ball back for them. And, you know, whenever you go into a game and, you know, we don't get as much coverage as their defense, you know, it's a slap in the face a little bit. And a lot of guys took it personal. And, you know, we had so many guys making plays today. I mean, that's the kind of thing we need. If that was any prayer I had, that was my prayer, that I, I would have fun this year. And, uh, and I think that that's what I and, and, and a lot of the other guys are doing. We're having fun. we got to keep having fun if we want to get to where we want to get. Now, Levin's backups are banged up, too. Travis Jervy aggravated a pull hamstring and has a sprained ankle. Raymond Harris was inactive because he's had a bad limp after off-season surgery. To repair a broken leg. Green Bay, by the way, is at Cincinnati next week. In college football, the Gophers beat Houston 14-7 to run the record at 2-0. Gopher quarterback Billy Cockerham threw for two touchdowns. The Gophers host Memphis on Saturday night. And Badger running back Ron Dane had a very good day Saturday. Rushed for 111 yards and scored three times as the Badgers beat Ohio University 45-0. Day needs just 33 yards to become the school's all-time leading rusher. Former Northwestern Tiger Tom Burke had a good day as well here wearing number 74. The senior defensive end had five tackles, three for a loss, and a sack. Burke, who wears number 74, was named the team's defensive player of the week last week. And the game also marked the debut of Jeff Bukowski. He wears number 67. He, too, played at Northwestern and plays the same position at Burke. It was the first time he wore the Badger uniform. We'll have more on both Burke and Pukowski later this week on the Badger duo from Northwestern. The state-ranked Hermitown High School football team takes on their arch rivals Proctor this week, but there's a strange twist to the story. Due to a lack of bleacher space, the game will be played at Proctor's Terry Egerdahl Field. Last month, the bleachers in Hermitown were found unsafe and were removed. Now temporary bleachers have been moved in tonight. The Hermitown School Board is expected to discuss the matter. Hawks are 2-0 on the year. Proctor 1-1. One on the season. Not far from the football field, the Hermitown girls soccer team hosted Grand Rapids this afternoon after the throw and a scramble saw Thunderhawks freshman Carol Lightfoot with the aggressive attempt in front of the net. Stopped by Hawks goalie Jamie Crump. The ball heads over the net following the collision. Later in the first half, Hawks senior Sarah Aho would attack the middle on Thunderhawks goalie Heidi Lord. She got a piece of the shot, knocked it out of bounds. No score early on. We'll have a final tonight on New 6 at 10. Major League Baseball tonight. The Twins will open a series with the Seattle Mariners. Brad Ratke will start for TK. He's 11 and 13 on the year. The Twins have lost four straight, five out of their last six. The Brewers are in Cincinnati tonight. And the home run derby between Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa is now dead even. Sosa got two more in yesterday's game with the Brewers to move to 62. They both have 13 games remaining in the regular season. And Dave Michelle, it should be very interesting to find out who will wind up on top. And then that last ball will really really be a collector and from then on we'll see what happens after that point. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Save those rookie cards. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well we'll take a look at what's coming up tonight on News 6 at 10 when we come back. Fly along with New Six in Maureen Talrico as she takes a once-in-a-lifetime ride with the pilots of the 148th Fighter Wing. Beginning Tuesday on New Six at 10. Bob, you're restocking housewares. Surely you're on register eight, you in the yellow. You know what to do. Prices all over the store to save you even more. Always low prices, always Walmart. 
Welcome to your new Schultz home. With the kids gone and the daily grind behind you, you deserve all that a Schultz home offers, including a bright morning room, a fully appointed kitchen with natural oak cabinetry, a spacious living room, and a luxurious master suite with a separate tub and shower and large storage areas. Schultz Homes, where America's living. Visit your Schultz Homes retailer today. Introducing the new $2 instant scratch game from the Wisconsin Lottery, Pepsi and Cash. Where you have a chance to win over $4.9 in cash prizes. Plus Pepsi products. You get some of the best odds of winning a prize ever. There are eight chances to win a cash prize on each ticket. Plus, scratch the bonus spot to win Pepsi merchandise. Or a cool four-wheel drive Jeep Wrangler Sport. In Crime Stoppers tonight, car prowls. Police want your help to help stop this ongoing problem in Delusa Lincoln Park neighborhood. Here's Sergeant Mike Olson with details. Between July 1st and September 8th, in a seven block by 10 block area in Duluth's Lincoln Park neighborhood, there were a high number of car prowls. According to Duluth police records, citizens in this neighborhood have reported 33 thefts from cars over those two months and 21 vehicles vandalized. The police need the help of the community. If you live in the Lincoln Park area and would like to be a part of a neighborhood block watch, call the Lincoln Park Neighborhood Police Station at 723-3506. Crime Stoppers would like to know who's responsible for the car prowls. You could also call us if you'd like to be part of a neighborhood watch in another area. We'll put you in touch with the right people. Our numbers are 1-800-974-TIPS or 723-ENOUGH. That's 723-3683. Mark Mallory is here now with a look ahead at what's coming up on News 6 at 10. Michelle and Dave, the sale of your personal information is the topic of tonight's iTeam 6 follow-up. Now, earlier this year, Barbara Riles reported on how the state of Minnesota is selling your personal information to telemarketers and others. Since then, we've had many questions about the iTeam 6 exclusive sold out. Now, tonight at 10, find out how to stop state offices from giving out your name, address, phone number, and age to the highest bidder. We'll also give you a number to call if you want your name removed from telemarketing list. That's coming up tonight on uh, News 6 of 10. All right. Thank you, Mark. We'll, we'll look pay forward attention. To it. Okay. Now, George, one last look at the forecast. It's going to be blissfully quiet. We've gotten our rain, or at least most locations have gotten their rain. For those that missed it, I'm really sorry because that was our chance for a while. <laughs> Uh, but it's going to be fogging up. The spots that did see the heavy rainfall with clear skies. Uh, just be careful. Some of that fog could be quite dense. And then for tomorrow, not as stuffy as today. The humidity will be going down, especially during the afternoon. Winds will be swinging around to the northeast later in the day. Overall, a beautiful late summer day. We don't really start fall here for another a week or so before we hit the equinox. And as we look on ahead to Wednesday, cool and breezy, 65 to 70. Couldn't ask for a better stretch of days, except if maybe they would fall on the weekend. And those maple trees are starting to turn colors beautiful. They are. I had a, mm -hmm. a couple of birch trees in my yard. Just just gave it up on Friday. Just <laughs> before the rain, the poor thing just, boom, turned gold all in one day. So there's still hope for a very colorful fall, even despite the drought. And, and there's some hope. Okay, good. Hope springs eternal. All right, thanks, George. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you for watching News 6 at 6. We'll keep you in touch with 35 minutes of news, weather, and sports tonight on News 6 at 10. Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream, fashions for men, located in the heart of downtown Duluth.